Hey, um, I promised you yesterday I'm going to share with you my story within 48 hours. And so here it goes. Um, last year, when I uh, went to the SFM's hot seat, one webinar with Daniel, um, people encouraged me to share my story. And I can't do it. Um, so it's been over one and a half, uh, one and a half years that you mentioned about something. That's why I decided to share with what I'm about to say. And the reason I did not want to share with my story about this part is because I divorced and I don't know how to deliver my story and not to belittle my ex-husband. So I was married 2004. We met online. and. He actually told me about his story, but that was after I did not quite pay attention to certain words he said, like he was abused when he was little by his father. And before we married, I did not pay attention to thin sentence like this. It was many years after we married and the things went worse. I went through certain letters and I noticed that um, I had different understanding on that sentence after I went through things with him. So basically, um, we met online. I came to the States for only 10 days and then I left. Um, we had argument. Um, in the truck. I wasn't comfortable living in a truck. And I grabbed my passport. Um, I left. I went to China. I was very sick for a while. And he went back to China. He went to China and he lived there for with me for about eight years. Um, then he decided to come back to the States. After one and years, uh, one and a half years of separation and preparing for the documentation, I came here in 2013. Um, during those years in China, I was the main provider for the family. Um, I thought that it was my fault to bring him back to China. Um, he followed me. He quit his job. Um, the things went worse because he did not work. And on top of that, he started drinking. Um, my uncle gave him some brandy and he started drinking. I used to blame my uncle for in my heart that he should not be so kind and gave him the alcohol but I was wrong because if someone wanted to do something and he can find his way to get the alcohol um, it proves that um, no matter how much I pour out he can always get something to uh, drink more. Argument, some abusive, um, not going for details. And I, we had a chance to divorce in China. I withdraw the, uh, um, the firing because I did not want to uh, kick him out of the country by doing that. I can't do it. Um, for years, I worked, I worked. Um, 
my life was so different than most people around me, and I could not get it. Because for someone like me, I deserve all the happiness and loving. Um, but it went to the opposite side. Anyway, we did not divorce in China. Um, but the thing is, I put so much focus on that person and our family. Like I would go to work. Um, I later worked for myself and I had an office in downtown. It took me about one hour to take the bus to go there. And um, and sometimes I went home early, like before five, to avoid the traffic. And I also wanted to cook dinner for us. Um, everything I did, he wasn't. He said I'm a wonderful wife. But I did not understand one thing is he's never really happy. Never really happy. Um, I can't save him. So that's what I realized. I cannot save that person. And I got drained so much. I was exhausted. The thing triggered me leaving him was when I came to the States. The expense of the uh, United States actually is about six times more than while I was living in China. So I thought to myself that I am not a bank. I cannot constantly provide the family while you don't work for us. And so, I you a uh, last video I mentioned about the God saved my life. This is comes the light uh, the story. I went to the church nearby and I started open, opening myself, uh, to talk to people, uh, and I finally finally decided to separate. In my whole life, that was the very first hard decision for me to make is to separate that person and to move. I remember my ex-husband said, you know, once you take this step, when you will never come back. I did not believe him because I thought it's just separation. And I really want to let go. And I want him to realize that he has the responsibility for the family. Um, it took me seven months to decide that and then move out. Uh, we never went back. Um, I really wish when I deliver this message, I don't want to put that person down. I just want to simply say some story. Um, many want you to know that I went through things. And many things are uncertain for me at that moment. But what I learned during this process is there is certainty in the uncertain which is God is going to put someone in your life somewhere um, sometime to just help you go through that little journey, little station. And you need to have this faith. Anyway, the main reason I could not go back was one letter from that person. That letter told me well, I'm not sure if I should open this letter or not, but anyway, that letter triggered me to not to go back. It was only about money. If I want a divorce, I have to pay him certain amount. If I want to continue the marriage, I have to pay him certain amount.
I thank him for bring me, uh, bringing me to this country. Um, I wish him the best till today. Um, I wish him the best. Um, I guess my message was to tell you that you have to love yourself enough to say no so you can move forward. Um, I hope my message does not say much about the bad words about my ex-husband. And he was hurting in his childhood from the abusive father. Um, I don't quite understand that, but that has the massive effect on his growth. Um, um, I guess my second point for you to, to share with you is, yes, you love someone. But you cannot sacrifice yourself too much. You have to set up a boundary. And you have to tell yourself that this is not the life you want and you deserve much better. And then you find a way out. And you can make it. Um, so that's the story I'm sharing today. Um, that's also before I join SFM. Um, so, um, have a nice day.